Hello, my name is Joseph Lepre. I'm a shareholder from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to ask a question. Mr. Buffett, you mentioned earlier today that you'd be willing to sell insurance in exchange for stock options. If possible, could you please describe a methodology for the valuation of stock options, particularly in cases where there is no market pricing data available for the option being valued? Yeah, I, I, would, <clears throat> I could figure out what I would pay for an option on a private business. I could figure out what I could pay for an option on a public business, might be a little easier. Uh, I could figure out what I'd pay for an option on an apartment house uh, uh, or a farm. Uh, I had a friend, I mean, when I was 20 years old, uh, we developed a big plan. We were going to go out and option out, up, out, option farms, you know, outside of uh, uh, what were then the city limits of Omaha. And, and we figured that if we offered a farmer a modest amount, which would be annual income to him, to option his farm at double the price it was bringing then, that it would, you know, he would be happy to sell for double the price that, that year, and, and maybe we could do something. And uh, it might have worked out okay. Option, op, every option has value. You know, I've got a house worth X. If you offer me a few dollars to give you an option at 2X for 10 years, I'm not going to take it because there are all kinds of possibilities in terms of inflation. All options have value. And, and, People that get options usually understand that <clears throat> better than people that give options. I'm not talking about stock options now, but uh, but in, in other arenas. <clears throat> um, so we would be happy, you know. I mean, whether I could, get, let's take, we'll just pull one out of the air. Let's take uh, uh, an untraded company like Mars Inc. Or um, would, would I be happy to have an option, a 10-year option on? on a piece of Mars Inc. at a, some given price? Sure, I would, and I, there's an amount I would take for that. I would take in lieu of getting cash if I was writing a big insurance policy for Mar Mars Inc. They're not going to do this with me, but that, and I would be happy, you know, and instead of if you buy homeowner's insurance from me, if you want to give me an option on your house uh, for 10 years, uh, I'll take that in lieu of the premium. I'll, I'll make my own calculations to value. It won't be Black Shoals, uh, although that might be the best arrangement under many circumstances, but I would probably crank into, in my own case, we, we bought we bought and sold options. Some, and a matter of fact, <clears throat> on June 3rd, Berkshire Hathaway will receive $60 million if the S&P 500 closes at 1150-something or below. And two years ago, when the S&P was 14-something, we agreed or on, on that June 3rd option or whatever it was, $400 million nominal value, where in effect the counterparty uh, would get the profit above 2,000 and something, 42% up from the, from the current cash price. And we got the profit between 5 and 20% on the downside, on a put. Uh, People who were calculating the values of options at that time under traditional methods felt that that was a cashless transaction, that the value of the call that we gave was equal to the value of the put that we received. You know, I decided differently. Um, so we don't accept blindly option values as determined uh, by the calculations of people who win Nobel Prizes. Uh, instead, you know, we, we actually put an, an aspect of judgment uh, into some. There would be businesses that would come out with identical Black Shoals values on options for 10 years, and we would pay a different amount for one than the other, maybe a significantly different amount. But we would pay something for just about any option. And, uh, you know, it is the nature of prices in this world to change, and economic conditions to change, and an option is a chance to participate in a change uh, without giving up anything other than that original premium you pay. Uh, many people just don't seem to to grasp that, but believe me, the people who are getting options on stock do grasp that, and the people who are giving them, which are the shareholders, you know, represented by a group like this, who don't have any real voice in giving it, but they sometimes don't fully realize what's being given away. Imagine, it, you know, going up a few miles away from here and having two farms for sale, 
And you say to the guy, how much do you want for them? They both say $1,000 an acre, but the one guy says, but every year I want you to option, you know, I want you to give me 2% of the place back at 1,000. So, uh, you know, at the end of 10 years, 20% uh, of the upside belongs to me, but you've got all the downside. I mean, which farm are you gonna buy? And the one without the options or the one with the options? It's, it's, not, it's not very complicated. Uh, and we will, we are dead serious when we say we will take options in lieu of cash. Incidentally, the company that gives us those options in lieu of cash for an insurance premium has to record the expense uh, in terms of the fair value of the option they've given us. The only item for which they don't have to record that as expense is compensation. But if they give it to us for their light bill or they give it to us for their insurance premium or they give it to us for their rent, they have to call it a cost. But only when it comes to the CEO's compensation and other people like it, do they not have to record it as a cost? And that's because they've been able to get Congress to bow to their will and to their campaign contributions. Charlie? Yeah, the, the Black Scholes crowd really did get a Nobel Prize for inventing this formula to value options, not executive stock options, but just options generally. And if you don't know anything about the company, except the past price history of stock transactions dividend. and if it's and the dividend being paid and if the option is over a very short term it's a very good way at, of approximating the value of the option but if it's a long-term option and you think you know something it's an insane way to value the option and wall street is full of people with iqs of 150 that are using Black Shoals to value options that shouldn't be tortured into the model. And all of corporate of America is using Black Shoals to price stock options in the footnotes of the accounting statements. And they do that because it comes up with the lowest cost number. Well, they not only do that, but they assume the term is less than the actual term of the option. And I mean, uh, they, they'll do everything they can and I've been in on these discussions. They'll do everything they can to make the number look as low as possible. It's that simple. And they're using a phony process to determine the number in the first place. So it's a Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And the only thing that's consisting, consistent in it is that the whole thing is disgusting. 